grace the Lord is with you. Let us rally among women, and let us raise the fruit of your Lord Jesus. For in the name of God, pray for us in this, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Let us rally among women, and let us raise the fruit of your Lord Jesus. Praise the 
Jesus, soul of compassion. For the sake of Jesus, soul of compassion. Yeah. 
mother and fathers, their loving relatives of Sister Roslyn and Sister Preeti, RPJC family members, all our friends and well wishers. The pain of losing Sister Rosalind is intense. It reminds us both of the depth of our loving bond we had cherished with her and her family and the pain JC family, particularly her simplicity, cheerfulness, friendly nature, guilelessness, humility, and childlike trust in God. The words of St. Paul to Timothy are a great source of consolation to each of us. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. 2 Timothy 4, 7-8 Sister Rosalind dearly loved her family members, PHJC family and the people to whom she rendered her mission, especially to the tiny thoughts for whom she lovingly served and cared for about 35 years as kindergarten teacher. Sister Rosaline was born at Pasukadao, Calicut district, Kerala on February 27, 1959. She is the fourth child among the eleven children of Mr. K. J. Chako and late Mrs. Rosama. On August 29th, she joined the aspirancy of the Congregation of the Poor Handmaids of Jesus Christ in Sevanelaya, Bangalore, and on 15th August 1983, Sister Rosaline pronounced her first profession and on December 6, she made a final commitment in this very chapel. She was trained as a kindergarten teacher during her initial formation. She had true passion for her profession as kindergarten teacher and was well known for her loving, patient, kind and understanding teaching, caring and guiding the children towards all of those who came in contact with her and those in her classroom. She also was a true missionary who loved people. Family visits meant a great deal to her and she always graciously welcomed anyone who called on her. We will not forget her innocent smile and laughter which radiated peace. Her missionary journey. 1989 she did her tailoring and machine embroidery at Holy Cross Vocational Institute, Hazaribar. In 1983 to 1984, she was in Seva Nilaya, Ranchi, Jharkhand, as one of the initial members at the initial period. 1985-87, she was working as a kindergarten teacher at Marinivas Barwani in Madhya Pradesh. 87-90, she did her tertiary program 
in Bangalore. 92, 92, 92, 92, she went as one of the pioneers to Tamil Nadu at Sabasthi Alpuram, near the fish of oak. She worked as a pastoral minister. She taught many of the young women doing tailoring and visiting the families. 92 to 93, she worked again in Marinivas, Padwani, Madhya Pradesh. 93 to 98, she was in St. Mary's Convent, Sabasthi Arvuram, Tamil Nadu. 99 to 2000, she did a spiritual renewal course in National Centre, Bangalore. 2000 to 2008, she was again at Marinivas, Badawani, Madhya Pradesh. 2008-2011, she worked in Catherine Convent, Dona, Uttar Pradesh. 2011-2015, she cared for the daycare children at Gyan Dipti, Kottanur, Bangalore. 2015 to 2017, St. Catherine Convent, Kochukamashi in Kerala. 2018 to 2019, she worked in Catherine Nilaya, Chinduwada in Madhya Pradesh. 2019 to 2020, she came back to Seva Nilaya, Bangalore. The ongoing final parting of Sister Rosalind Kanjarathikkal, PHAC. Sister Rosalind was diagnosed with last stage of breast cancer in the month of August 9, 2019. Thereafter, she was undergoing medication and was under the loving care of our dear sisters in, here in Sevanilaya. Today, there are many who owe a heartfelt thanks to our sisters who intensely took care of her. I would like to name a few Sister Pauline, Sister Jemma, Sister Ro, Sister Jansi, Sister Christy, and Sister Sujata, many of our junior sisters who took turn to be with her at nights and looked after her whenever she was in need of preparing something special or attending to her needs, all that she was in need of. Thank you, dear sisters. On behalf of Sister Rosalind, I extend my heartfelt thanks to you for your loving care and service. Even in her days of sickness, she was joyful, calm, very hopeful, and very cooperative, and grateful to the sisters who cared for her, even for a little thing. She spent most of her time in praying, offering special prayers, and helping in the kitchen whenever she could. Her health started deteriorating in the last month. On 19th October, she became very ill and was taken to St. John's Medical College for treatment. She breathed her last on 22nd October at 1 a.m. Her eyes and her heart were always fixed on what is beyond our understanding, the face of God. We are all witnesses of this in this house. We saw, as St. Paul says, her outer self wasting away, her inner self being renewed day by day. This lovely sister who throughout her 61 years in this earth 
with simplicity and childlike trust, walked by faith, not by sight, is now at home in that house, not made, made by hands, but by God, her eternal love. As we read in 2 Corinthians 5 1. We bid farewell to our beloved sister Rosaline, PHAC. Her flame exhausted now, but continued to shine in eternal abode and in each of our hearts. Today, as we celebrate the funeral mass of our dearly loved sister, I extend my deepest sympathy to her relatives and in particular her younger sister, Stapriti PHAC, who is present with us now, and all members of the poor handmaids of Jesus Christ, particularly her beloved sisters in St. Mary's province. As members of the religious community, as members of family, friends of Sister Rosaline in the various missions, in chorus, we thank God. In chorus, we thank God for the love and light, for the truth, the warmth and devotion that we went out from Sister Rosaline and touched us all so deeply. We honor her best by striving in our lives to manifest to others the virtues that she lived so gently and lovingly. We commend her soul to you for her goodness and pray that her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, sisters, fathers, brothers. In the first place, we, the Salesians, those who are present here, we would like to offer our sincere condolences to Sister Provincial and all the members of the PHJC family, especially Sister Preeti, who is the younger, younger sister of her sister Rosalie, and all the family members. As soon as we got this news, we prayed for the repose of her soul. So many good things have been said about Sister Rosalie. I just want to mention one or two. Anyone who came into contact with the Sister Rosalie would vouch that she was deeply spiritual. A person who was always in contact with God. That is my personal impression about Sister Rosalie. A few days ago, I was with her in this very same house spend some time with her and amidst all her pain and anguish she was very joyful. Only a person who is in contact with God who is deeply spiritual can accept such pain and sorrow. I knew for certain that she was undergoing pain but she never showed it. She was all the time smiling and joking. Wonderful example of Christian fortitude. We are here to wish goodbye to Sister Rosalind. This morning I was listening to a small, <coughs> a small uh, message by Father Thomas from the plaque uh, uh, led to you of Sister Rosalind. And he was saying that Sister Rosalind 
was a person who was always in contact with people, especially uh, uh, relatives. During the holidays, vacation time, she would make it a point to visit all the family members. And she was a bond of unity and they fondly remember her for the time that she spent with the family, bringing them together in times of difficulties, in times of sorrows, and in times of joy. We thank Sister Roslyn, thank God for the gift of Sister Roslyn to us, to this PNJC family, and to all those who really benefited by her presence during your life here on earth. We thank God and we continue to pray that she may reach heaven and intercede for each one of us. It's also a reminder that one day we will also uh, we will also have our end, we will all die. We need to be prepared as Sister Rosalind was well prepared for her death. For the times that we have been not sincere with ourselves, with God and with our brothers and sisters and for many other sins that we have committed, we will sincerely ask pardon from the Lord and from our friends and prepare ourselves well to celebrate this Eucharist. I am offering this Mass for Sister Roselyn's uh, repose of her soul. May she rest in peace. I confess for my God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have created through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting light. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Charity, may rejoice in the coming of your glory, and together with her sisters, may delight in the everlasting happiness of your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be the Lord both of the dead and of the living. For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I say, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord.
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the soldiers came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified Jesus and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. It is a common feeling that as soon as we hear the news about the death of a person who we know from nowhere, grief envelops our mind and heart. And this grief is more if it is a dear one from the family or relation passed away. There is a vacuum created in the house as well as in the hearts of the beloved and this emptiness spreads everywhere. Only time and faith bring healing to this irreplaceable loss. But the fact is that life is a journey. It is a destination that gives meaning to this journey. The destination is our home. Since death is a gate for heaven, our home, reaching this gate is therefore a happy event to long for. Once a headmaster told in the assembly, all those who want to go to heaven, raise your hands. All the children raised their hands immediately, except the teachers. The headmaster smiled and said, do you see why? Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven belongs to children. All, all of them laughed. This, this headmaster was curious about one small little girl who did not raise her hand. So he asked this girl, Why, little child, are you not raised your hand? Why do we, do we not want to go home, go to heaven? Her answer was, My mother told me to return straight home after the class and not to go roaming. Of course, everyone laughed. But I thought what she said was perfectly right. Our Father in Heaven has also told us 
not to wander aimlessly, but to come back straight home after the earthly school. After the earthly school hour is over. How nice it would be if we could happily run home as children do after their schooling. Alas, that is not the case with adults. Children understand more instinctively than the adults that the school is temporary and the home is which is permanent. Once a friend asked me to write on happy death. What a contradiction, he said. How can death be happy and a happy event? No one ever wants to die, not even the smallest of creatures. Try to kill a mosquito and you will see how much it tries to escape. I agreed with him. Death is never good and it is not right. It is our right that we shun it. Jesus said that God is the God of the living and not of the dead. The psalmist faced with the death cried out, Can death praise you? Can those who go down to the pit give you thanks? Men and women of every age have rebelled against death and rightly so. Death has no place in the creation and the providence of the all-loving all and omnipotent God. Then, why is it here? Well, the truth is that it is not there. Among the many illusions that people suffer, that we humans suffer, the worst one is that we are going to die and cease to exist. It is a case of mistaken perception. A 60-year-old man was discovered that he had diabetes. The wife put him on a strict diet, no sugar, no fat, no fruits, only boiled vegetables. The husband hated it, but he lived a healthy life for another 40 years. When the couple finally died and went up to heaven, St. Peter took them to the dining hall and opened up an immense banquet in front of them. The man said, Sorry, Peter, I can't touch most of your dishes. I am diabetic and my cholesterol is high. Peter laughed and said, My you do not understand. This is heaven. There is no sickness, suffering and pain here. You can just eat whatever you want to your heart's content. Is that so? exclaimed the man. Immediately, he turned to his wife and shouted, You old lady, you and your health diets, you have unnecessarily prolonged my agony. We should have come here 40 years back. Yes, our Christian belief portrays death as life that is changed and not life that is taken away. The body and soul will be reunited on the last day after the death to share God's life forever. 
the one who believes in me will never die but would have eternal life jesus said jesus has conquered death and lives a life stronger than the laws of nature for us who believes in christ eternal life doesn't begin at the moment of our death but it had already began at the conception of our soul it continues to live and take shape through our freedom the choices we make how we make use or neglect our talents and how we treat our neighbors the final judgment will reveal that god's justice triumphs over all the injustices perpetrated by his creatures and god's love is stronger than death after our death we will enter into a life with him forever in death the last of human thirst are overcome there comes the supernatural thirst to possess god who is the source of life and every love just as rain as a rain which has fallen upon the soil and does not want to become dust but to return as mist the soul now has a thirst to ascend to the place from which it came down so dear brothers and sisters our faith our faith is built on the resurrection of christ the hope of the resurrection makes us convinced of the fact that we will see again in heaven those whom we lose on earth death should not frighten us but rather encourage us to live our life and life to the full and to make best use of the present and we know sister roslin who has lived his life on this earth said believing in the love of christ and sharing that love through her very presence through her activities and finally through her suffering in the sickness has gone ahead of us and she will be with us forever waiting for us in heaven and all our earnings should be one that which we heard in the gospel jesus remember me when you are in your kingdom
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Sister Rosalie, we beseech your mercy that she who died did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right yes. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that he might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joyful celebration we proclaim. give life to all things and you make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration so that they may become the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ and whose command we celebrate this mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took the bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. As we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the occasion of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Jews of her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. We please you confirm in faith and charity a pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis Apo, Peter Machal, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, a beloved sister Rosalind, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform a lonely body after the pattern of his own glorious body to our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom therefore we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tears from our eyes, for seeing you are God and you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without ending. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O Lord Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Trusting in the divine providence of God and asking for his mercy and pardon on Sister Rosalind and trusting that she has really entered into heaven with real hope and joy. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to the temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Amen.
Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I will say, Rejoice. I know we call this day a morning day. But in the light of Christ, we call it a day to rejoice and to thank God for the gift of Sister Rosalie. And we hope Sister is with her dear ones and all the heavenly angels rejoices with the heavenly father. She has left behind her earthly father. But she is not going to miss that father. With that hope, I stand here to rejoice with sister and I invite each of you to thank God for this precious gift of sister for our community. Once again, I thank on behalf of the poor handmaid's family, all the dear ones, the family members who are present and who are absent and who could not come due to this COVID pandemic. And our dear sister Preeti, her younger sister, we thank you. But we thank you for gifting her to our family, PHAC family. To nurture her virtues and to impart those with others. I take this opportunity to thank Father Elevenal, who was the main celebrant for us and relative of Sister Rosalind. Father Sebastian, the rector of our Salvation family from Schlaus, Father Ruben, Father Vijay, and all our dear sisters from neighboring communities, our friends, relatives, once again, and all the poor handmaids family. Very specially, I take this opportunity to thank Sister Suma, who represents the northern province of St. Joseph province. Sister Selim, Suma and Selim belong to Sister Rosalind's Vishit. And there are two more sisters who could not come. We thank you, sisters for being present here despite many protocol to be followed. And I thank our community in Vidyanagar for ever ready to help us, especially at this time, with the transport and availing the members at any time. And all these people who rendered us your service and kindness on behalf of Sister Rosalind, I also thank the doctors, the nurses, and all those who nursed her during this one and a half year of her illness. I can go on saying thank you for many reasons. But you know, this is part of our life, part of our family, to be kind and service to one another. So I take this opportunity and uh, to thank every one of you, especially Sevanilaya community, Sister Teresa and sisters, the juniors who are absent here, who have played a great role in helping Sister Rosalind here now, and all our communities, from different parts of our communities, Vidyanagar, Elkhart, Kenichira, St. Joseph Province, Aravani, Khandua, and all our sisters here 
novitiate in St. Mary's study house. You all took trouble to come here to witness this and to share this loss with one another. Thank you dear sisters and dear family members. After this Mass, we will go to the cemetery for the funerals of Sister Rosalind and Katpaldi. After that we all come back and have a little refreshment in Sevanilaya. And once again I thank you fathers for your availability to come and celebrate this Eucharistic celebration so meaningfully. And uh, Father Sebastian for your so, so inspiring as well as very touching homily that you shared with us. Thank you fathers. Thank you one and all and join us. I ask permission from the police if there is any restrictions but then he said it's okay ma'am you can go ahead. So those of you who can come with them whichever the car is available to the cemetery. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for his journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Rosalie may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. life to all things, that he will raise up this mortal body to the perfection of the company of saints. May God give her merciful judgment and forgive all her sins. May Christ the Good Shepherd lead her safely home to be at peace with Christ our Father. And may she be happy forever with all the saints in the presence of the eternal King. Saints of God, come to her aid, come to meet her, angels of the Lord. As the saints of the Lord and present her for the God most high. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. As the saints of the Lord and present her for the God most high. Give her eternal rest, O Lord. And may your light shine on her forever. Receive her soul and present her before the Lord's heart. Father, into your hands we commend our sister, who we are confident that with all who have died in Christ, she will be raised to life in the last day and live with Christ forever 
We thank you for all the blessings you give to her in this. You give to her in this life to show your brotherly care for all of us and the fellowship which is ours with the saints in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Welcome our sister to your paradise and help us to comfort each other with the assurance of your faith to be with you and with our dear sister forever. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem.